and about 2,700 Ghanaians are to be engaged by the judicial service to work as commissioners of oaths for the ongoing Ghana card registration exercise. The recruits will undergo training and be licensed to assist the judiciary to administer oaths to persons who will vouch as witnesses for their relations who don't have the basic requirement for the card. Basic documents required or needed for the registration of the Ghana card are birth certificate and passport. This is backed by the National Identity Register Amendment Act 2017, Act 950, where a person is unable to provide the birth certificate or passport. Section 8, Clause 2 of the Act stipulates that the National Identification Authority, NIA, shall require a relative of the applicant to identify the applicant and the oath. This is where the work of a Commissioner of Oaths comes in. The services of the Commissioners for Oaths will be free of cost to the applicant for registration while ensuring the inclusion of those who are entitled to be included. Every reasonable effort must also be made to exclude foreigners from registering as Ghanaian. Every Ghanaian, as soon as you are born to infinity, is to be registered and issued with the Ghana card. Ghanaians living in Ghana will receive the card at no cost to the individual. Whilst Ghanaians living outside the country will pay, a fee, will pay a fee for the card with regional variations. The mass regional nationwide registration will begin in October 2018. A month each for the Volta, Northern, Central, Upper East and Upper West, Brangahafo and the Eastern Regions. Registration in the Ashanti region will take two months, while that of the Greater Accra will take four months. Six months after the start of the national rollout, the SSR will be extended to Ghanaians in the diaspora. A concern over the breakdown of equipment or interruption on internet connectivity was raised. Are we upgrading the irises or the fingerprints or what exactly are we going to be upgrading? And you realize that the cost is uniform over the next five years. Again, when you are printing 2,000, you have 2,700 centers that are printing. As it stands now, the NIA has a strong room where you keep all of these printing consumables. You are moving all of these consumables into the field where you print the cards. What are the security protocols to ensure that tomorrow the NIA doesn't tell us that reams of Ghana cards got missing in transit and we do not know where those cards are and they find their hands into the hands of unscrupulous people who will print cards for other people. With respect to the upgrades, we are not talking of upgrading of your finger. Uh, of your fingerprints or irises. That you will have to do every 10 years because the card is valid, the card has a lifespan of 10 years. At the expiration of the card in 10 years, you go for a renewal. And that is when you may have to, I mean, upgrade um, um, your data to make sure that we are moving in tandem with the latest developments in technology in order to ensure that we are always abreast of the times with respect to biometric uh, identification creation, system creation and management. The security measures, the security measures that um, to prevent even the, the cards from being stolen. These cards, if you steal them, there is absolutely no use to which you can put them. The cards have been built in such a way, the security features in the, on the card is such that you cannot use it. You cannot go and print it on another machine. They are customized to NIA. If it is for mischief and someone dumps them, that's a different matter. But we have taken measures. Every, every batch of cards that leave the NIA premises are assigned to a particular person. They can be electronically traced and you cannot and the cars can be instantly deactivated. The NIA will pitch camp at registration centers similar to what is used by the Electoral Commission during registration of voters across the country.